So in this situation, we're going to be using a, a previously built model uh, to make predictions against guests or hotel guests who haven't provided us with a recommendation score, either because they've refused to or because they haven't been asked. And for that purpose, of course, we've got some data to work with. This is known as scoring data. And if I just show it to you, you can see it's very, very familiar. It looks very similar to the previous data set that we saw. This time it's made up of less than 4,500 records, just under about 4,200 records. We've got a bunch of, uh, of guests here we can score against. Crucially, however, when we scroll across and look at the different fields, we can see that it doesn't have a net promoter score, uh, recommendation score at the end. We, so they haven't provided that. That's the thing that we're trying to predict. So how can we take the model that we built earlier, or one of the models that we built earlier, and apply it to this data in order to generate this prediction, this score. And um, to do so, if I look inside the previous model nugget, which is sitting up here in the models tab, if I hit browse, and if I look inside it, here's the C5 model. I'll, I'll choose that one because it's a series of rules. It kind of makes sense to me, and it's obviously the most accurate. Um, and if I get it to generate just that model by going model to palette, it goes and pulls out just that individual model and if I connect that up uh, to my data source, I'll just make a couple of changes here. I'm going to go into edit here. I'm going to go into settings and I'm going to ask it to do something called score by converting to native SQL. Um, and let me make a, a copy of this little node here. So this is what the, the data looks like, of course, without the model attached to it. There's the, the final, the final uh, column. So when I attach the model to it, now we've got a final column here, uh, which is slightly different. So we've got two new columns. They both have dollar signs in front of them. These are the predictions themselves that the model is generating. So here we have the category prediction, uh, which is whether people are passives, promoters, or detractors. And here we have what's called the propensity score, the confidence score of that prediction. Now, if we assume there's, there's three categories, um, there's a 33% chance of you being in either one of those categories. Let's just assume that it's, it's, it's completely random. Then obviously anything uh, which is a, a greater than 33% for that particular category means that you get selected um, uh, and, and predicted to be in that particular grouping here. So in this example, however, the hotel chain were particularly interested in people who were predicted to be passives. That means scores of uh, seven or eight out of 10. And they were particularly interested in high spending passives. So here we have all the people that we can see here that have been predicted as passives are marked as passive. So if we wanted to just select those predictions, we just simply go to generate and say select, and it goes and generates what's called a select node for us. And if you look inside it, you can see that it's actually just selecting NPS category equals passive. I'll give it a little, a little uh, annotation here to make it easier and call it predicted passive. So we know what that does. But they were also particularly interested in the high spending passive. So what do we mean by high spending passives? Well, if I go and put a uh, histogram and attach that downstream of this selection, that means everybody in this selection is going to be in the passive group. Let's just prove that by control C, control V and putting another table node, you'll see that everybody here at the end is predicted to be a passive. So that's 747 records. And if I right click on that and go to edit, I can say, well, show me the spending uh, distribution for these people. And here it shows me the overall spending distribution. Let's say we're interested in people beyond, I don't know, $400 or so. I can either go and create my own uh, select statement or I can go and interact with this histogram and simply click on it and say, let's try and get it roughly around about $400. If I right click on that and go uh, generate a select node for that band, then it generates this other little select node. And if I look inside it, you can see it's it's just it's actually just above $400, $414. So I'll just change that to 400. And I'll say that, I'll, ch I'll call this high spender, or something like that, because they're relatively high spend group. And now we've got a slightly smaller number of cases that we've got to deal with. So we're down to 138 records. These are our high spending passives that we could possibly convert. And of course, 
the fact that we've got a relatively small number here is uh, utter, uh, is is utterly irrelevant. We could be dealing with 138,000 and 1.3 million. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but for illustration purposes, we can work with this. What are we going to do with this uh, this list of potential uh, uh, people that we can convert to to promoters? Well. We want to send it somewhere. We usually want to send it to a database, something like that for campaign selection. So what we'll do is, if I go and put an export node on the end of that, I can export it back out to a database. But I don't want to export all the data out. I'm really just interested in the guest name and and their propensity score, if you like, their their, their confidence score for that particular that particular category that they're predicted to be in. So I can add in another little field here called a filter node. If I connect that up means I can get rid of all of the uh, non-relevant fields and just select them out. I don't even need the NPS category field here because that's all equal to passive. And I can rename this field to make it a little bit easier for the people at the far end who are going to be picking this up and using it as part of their campaign. And say this should in fact be, um, this should actually be, uh, let's say, passive propensity, let's call it that. And maybe we're going to offer these, you know, seven hundred and forty-seven people quite, you know, quite a good deal, quite a, quite a strong discount to try and try and convert them over to promoters. If we click edit here, and we go to data source, I can add it to data source. I can create a table name here, and we'll call it um, passive campaign, something like that. Passive to promoter campaign. Let's call it that. Passive to promoter. Campaign, and if I run that, it will go simply go and punch out a table. I'll ask it to generate an import node, so you can see it actually generating that. If I run that, it goes and generates a little import node, so I can just check that and see what that table looks like in the database. So if I go and add another table onto it, and sure enough, when we look at what it's produced there, it's produced uh, 138 records here of. Uh, of people who are who have a high rel uh, who are, whose passive propensity is shown down the side here, and their guest number is shown as well. You'll notice that when I ran that, uh, it actually very briefly flashed purple. Uh, if I just switch that on, say drop existing table, you'll see it here just flash very briefly purple. That's because the entire stream is being written out as SQL. Something that Modeler can do is is it can convert certain types of models like C five models and all of these downstream. Uh, procedures that we put in here into SQL. So it means that basically the data doesn't even leave the database. The data stays exactly the database in the database. And what we've done is we've converted the modeler stream to SQL and then applied it to the data database. So it makes it very, very efficient, very, very fast. We're not dragging large amounts of data across across the, the network to be scored against the modeler server or against the modeler client desktop. Okay, in the next section, we're actually going to be focused on on text mining, on analyzing unstructured data in the form of verbatim text or open-ended responses. And this is the text that's associated with uh, the answer to the questions that people are, are, are give when, they, when they're asked, you know, why did you provide this score? And what we want to know is whether or not there are factors or things within that text that are you know strongly correlated with the score that they're providing. Are there certain things that the management of the hotel chain can focus on uh, to help them drive up their net promoter score and help them uncover subtle relationships that they simply can't see in the, in, in the structured or the quantitative data?